I'm a food scientist, so I tend to see food a little bit differently than the average person. Because even the most ordinary snacks are packed with a little science or secret tricks that most people never think twice about. Think about your favorite red candy or maybe a pink colored yogurt. Where do you think that color is coming from? Maybe you assume beets or strawberries? But a very common natural red color that is used in the food industry actually has a very surprising source, insects. One natural colorant called carmine or cochineal or cochineal, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, I've heard both of those ways. This colorant is actually derived from female insects. So these bugs are harvested mostly in South America, uh, processed, dried, and then we extract that purified red dye from them. And this, this type of colorant, it's used in everything from like juices to yogurt to uh, cosmetics. Now don't get this confused. It's not like carmine is just like crushed up bugs, which I worry that's what the internet is going to, sens to say, like as it over sensationalizes it. Um, but if you missed it, actually in my first video in this series, I talk about just how many bugs are in your food. So I'll leave the link in that description, but I totally get it. Not everyone loves these insect derived ingredients. Okay. But when it comes to natural or natural colorants, there are, you know, limited sources. So if it wants to be, you know, you want to say it's natural, you're looking at animals, um, plants, microorganisms producing it, and you know, insects is also one of those sources. Now, carmine as a food ingredient, I know it has had some backlash. I remember Starbucks had this huge news story where they were using carmine to color one of their red drinks. Uh, and when people found out it was derived from insects, uh, they didn't like that. So I know Starbucks eventually did switch to more of a plant derived red color. Uh, but I just find that very few people understand where carmine comes from. Ever notice that like tiny tab or twisty tie on your loaf of bread? It's not there just to make sure the bag stays shut. This actually tells you what day of the week the bread was baked on. This color coded system was originally created to help grocery store workers to help them rotate stock more easily. So each day of the week is associated with a certain color of a tag. So Monday is blue, Tuesday is a green tag, Thursday red, Friday white, and Saturday yellow. Now you might be realizing a couple days are missed there, and that's because on Sunday and Wednesday, traditionally bakeries had been closed. So the next time you're picking up a loaf of bread, take a quick look at the color of the tab. This is an easy trick to make sure you get the freshest one. Have you ever cracked open an egg and seen just like the most vivid, bright egg yolk? And you probably think like, wow, this must be the most nutritious egg ever. But here's the truth. The color of the egg yolk doesn't correspond to the quality of the egg, the flavor, or even the nutrition. That rich color of the egg yolk actually depends on what pigments are in the hen's diet. It doesn't reflect, you know, how fancy or how premium the egg is. So hens that eat a diet rich in like these orangish yellow plant pigments, uh, these are in foods like uh, marigold leaves, alfalfa, or uh, corn. Because they eat these specific yellow orange pigments, these hens are going to lay eggs that have that yolk with that like vivid, bright color. Meanwhile, hens that eat a different feed, say if it was like more of like a wheat based feed, which naturally has, you know, not a lot of these yellow pigments, their yolks are going to be a paler yellow because of that feed. And there's no proven difference in nutrition or quality between a yolk that is bright vivid yellow or a more pale yellow. When you think about fresh meat, what color does your brain think this meat is? If I had to guess, it's probably that like bright cherry red we're used to seeing in the grocery store. But here's the twist. Fresh meat isn't always red. And just because it's a different color does not mean it's gone bad. Right after meat is cut, it's exposed to the air or more specifically oxygen. 
And when this happens, a protein in meat called myoglobin binds that oxygen, and now it looks this red hue to us. Even you might think like in packaged meat where it has like that cling wrap, that plastic over, it still looks bright red because actually oxygen can get through that plastic. It's permeable to oxygen. But in no way, like no way is red the only fresh color of meat. Now, if the meat is not exposed to oxygen, that same protein, myoglobin, is in its deoxygenated form. This will actually look purple to us. The meat will sort of have this purple hue, but again, same fresh meat. Could be the same age of meat, it just is purple versus red. And I know this one may be hard to believe, but fresh meat can also be brown in color because when myoglobin is in its oxidized form, so oxidized mean it's Fe3+, plus, it's iron in its oxidized form, this will actually look brown to us. But again, this can be fresh meat. Just because it looks brown or looks a different color doesn't actually mean, you know, you can tell it's fresh versus an older cut. Because I hope you can see the color of a meat isn't a good way to tell its freshness. I would maybe look at more of like its texture of how does the meat smell and if it's been stored properly. You've probably seen foods labeled as natural or marketed as like clean, clean ingredients, clean label. And maybe you think to yourself like, oh, this must be so healthy. I mean, I do a lot of consulting. I'll formulate new products for people. And I always get asked to have a clean ingredient list. But the problem with these terms like clean or natural is there is no regulation or definition of what these, this actually means. This means food companies can really, you know, use natural or clean on food labels however they please, right? It doesn't really matter what ingredients are used. A food could have artificial flavors, uh, be heavily processed, have preservatives. You could slap on natural or clean, right? There's no, there's no definition. There's no regulation on this. And this is all because the FDA has not said like what is natural, defined natural. They haven't talked about like clean at all, which means to me as someone who is a food scientist, I just think this is more of like a marketing term or a marketing gimmick. It really doesn't reflect the food product at all to me. I, I wouldn't really weigh it too heavily. Have you ever heard someone claim that an egg in a brown shell is healthier than eggs in white shells? I'm sorry to break this to you, but the color of the eggshell has extremely little to nothing to do with the nutrition. It's simply based on what type of breed of chicken laid that egg. Chickens that have white feathers and white earlobes tend to lay white eggs. Well, chickens that have this sort of like reddish brown colored feather and red earlobes, those ones lay brown eggs. So it comes down to genetics. It's not a health or nutritional thing. So why do people think that brown eggs are better? If I had to guess, it's simply a case of like, we want what we can't have. So because White eggshells are, you know, most common. The standard in grocery stores are what they are commercially produced. We have somehow started to think that brown eggs are uh, more natural or more premium simply because we usually can't get our hands on them. White feathered chickens were favored for commercial egg production for a couple of reasons, mainly that their body is smaller than brown chickens, which means they require less feed and also take up less space, which means raising white chickens on a large scale is much more economical than brown chickens. And really, this is why white eggs are now the norm. Let me know in the comments which of these fun facts blew your mind the most, and if you'd like to see a part three of what food scientists know, but you don't. Next, I would recommend watching my video that explains how packaging actually changes the flavor of our food.